The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. A gentleman named Frank Richard Stockton whose name may not be familiar to you, as I must admit it wasn't to me, wrote one of the most famous short stories of all time. It was called The Lady or the Tiger. I mention it only because, in its own curious way, it reminded me of the story that Dr. Felix Brandt is about to reveal. What impulse drives me to put what follows on paper? I don't exactly know. I suppose it's a need for confession. Or perhaps a prayer for forgiveness to a God I've forgotten and and whose mercy I do not deserve when I die. Which will be shortly. And I wonder when they close my eyes at last if I shall meet the soul of Hugh Prentice. And if I too will be condemned to wander eternally in a vast limbo of loneliness as punishment for my crime. A crime worse than murder, for which I did not have the courage. But I was determined that death was too easy for someone who had violated the one person I had held most dear in all my life. So I dared play God out of my own special knowledge and exact a punishment to fit the crime. Whoever reads this, make your own judgment. What has been done cannot be undone. Our mystery drama, The Doppelganger, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Howard Da Silva. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. To go back to The Lady and the Tiger, you'll remember, I'm sure, that it was a story of a man who faced two doors. Behind one of them was a famished, raging, man-eating tiger who would devour and destroy. Behind the other was a love goddess, every man's desire. Now, I'm not suggesting that this story has anything to do with that story, except in the matter of choice. Something we do every day, select one alternative or the other. So, let's examine Dr. Felix Brandt's selection and judge him as you may. My name is Felix Brand. I have a doctorate in clinical psychology. I was married, have one daughter. As I've grown older, although it has been a passionate obsession of mine all my life, I've had to fight the tendency to devote more time to my avocation than my vocation. Parapsychology. The exploration of the psychic, the world beyond the finite world. A hobby or obsession, if you will which led to my unspeakable crime. Worse. Far worse than murder. It was nice of you to meet me at the airport, Dr. Brandt. For reasons deeper than simple courtesy, Hank, I wanted to have a private chat with you about the woman we both love, that daughter of mine. That's why I'm letting you drive, so I can... Well, what is it, sir? Something, Something about Fran? No, not just at this moment. Quickly, Hank. Cut over to the right lane. Fast. Uh, Yes, sir, but what... My God. Doctor, if, if you had told me to pull over, that maniac would have hit his head on. There's nothing more we can do, Hank. The police have it in hand. Let's drive on. Yes, sir. The man is dead. I don't know. Probably. 
He is dead. How do you know? I don't. I only sense it. He didn't want to live. I don't know why. Heart condition, terminal disease, some reason. Well, how, how could you know what kind of... Well, how did you know to tell me to pull over so suddenly? It, it, as if you knew in advance there was going to be an accident. I'm an old man, Hank. An old man who meddles, perhaps, in too many things outside my province. I've been looking deeper and deeper into parapsychology, and some of the things I've come to believe in rub off. What things, sir? Oh, extrasensory perception, ESP, if you'd rather. Clairvoyance, telepathy, all sorts of psychic phenomena. I'm thinking of abandoning classic psychology and switching over to the other side. Matter of fact, I'm already teaching one course in it. And that's of little interest to a lawyer. Or even my prospective son-in-law. <laughs> Tell me, what brought you flying down from law school for the weekend? Well, didn't Fran, uh... Or hasn't Fran said anything to you, Doctor? About what? I don't know, just, uh... Well, her letters have been very strange lately. And, <laughs> not very frequent. I thought something might be wrong. I, I mean, I had a hunch. <laughs> the amateur outflanks the expert. I hope you're wrong. You... You have me worried. Fran is everything in the world to me. If anything ever happened to her... She means as much to me, Dr. Brandt. Now, don't you worry. If anything is wrong, between us, we can set it right. It was a relief to have Hank back again. I had been worried about my daughter Fran lately. Fran, the picture of her mother... Whom I lost too soon. Bright, open, happy, reaching out both hands to the world. Full of love to give and expecting the same in return. And yet I knew, had been trying to conceal from myself something that was very wrong. Something it took Hank, whom she had loved with all her heart since high school, to bring out into the open. Hey, friend. What you trying to do? Get pneumonia? Oh. Hi, Hank. I didn't think you'd be here so soon. I'm I'm warm enough. Mm hmm Huddled out here in the gazebo with snow all around and the wind whistling up icicles. I've got my pocket to keep me warm. How about your love? Uh <laughs> don't I get a welcome kiss, even if it's a cold one? Oh, Hank. Oh, Hank, what am I gonna say to you? Well, something a lot more straight from the shoulder than those weaseling letters I've been getting recently. I know. I'm not very proud of myself at the moment, Hank. Hey, you don't have to cut corners with me. There's another guy, right? Hank, please listen to me and, and, and try to understand. You see, Dad has been teaching his regular survey course in basic psychology, and um, I am... Um, met this, this this guy there, and I don't know, I something crazy happened, something I wasn't prepared for or even thought about in my well-ordered life. You fell in love with him? Yes. Which lets me out, hmm? Please don't put it like that, Hank. It's just, it's something so sudden, so overwhelming. I, I don't... Hey, even... don't I even get a chance to get up to bat for the ninth inning? It's too late, Hank. I'm going to have his baby. Ooh. Well, that's... That's right between the eyes. When's the wedding? I don't know. I just found out. About me, I mean. I could cheerfully wring that rabbit's neck. Did your, your father know? Not yet. And this guy? I haven't even told him yet. Why not? Well, I... I, I, I just haven't had the chance. I Okay. So it shouldn't be a total loss, and I don't waste the whole trip down here. We'll make a deal. I'll tell the doc about it, and you pin down your, your dream boy. Uh, what's his name, by the way? I won't tell you that. I, I'm afraid to. I, I do love you, Hank. Oh, why did something else like this turn up? Oh, friend... I'm no oracle. It's just what happens to people. 
sort of thing that shakes faith and makes you wonder about God, but it's life. It's what we have to live. Come on, let's let's both go inside before we freeze to death. I can't believe what you're telling me, Hank. Well, you'd better, Pop. It's true. Pop. No, uh, sorry about that. Just slipped out. That's what I always wanted from Fran and you. And we can't legislate or play God. It's not the way it's going to be. But who's the man? Well, that's Fran's secret. It's her right to keep it that way. There's nothing either of us can do about it. I wouldn't agree with that. You'll give her up so easily? I never owned her. She's her own mistress. But you won't fight for her? Doc, have a heart. What can I do? I can't force her to love and accept me. The best I can do is be a good loser. You gotta be kidding, Fran. So we were together a few times. You ought to know better than to get caught. That's all I mean to you? Oh, don't knock it. Look, you're a sweet chick. We, we made great music. It was all for kicks, though. I mean, no ties, no padlocks. Look, don't get me wrong. I'll get you a right guy. I mean, it's all legal now. And I'll bear the freight. You... You, you want me to get rid of the baby? <laughs> well, what else? I mean, you want it, you have it. Just don't try to pin me down. I want to stay loose. That's my thing. I can't believe what you're saying. It's a whole new world. You want to live by old-fashioned boxes they shoved us in. That's your option. You can't push me in a sleeve, so don't ever try. I am today, baby. you got to take me as you find me. Or as I lose you. Well, that's the way it runs. Easy come, easy go. I was that easy. Oh, come on. I didn't say that. Oh, you don't say much you really mean. So? Maybe it's best we just split. No, you please, please. Look, the kid is out. And don't try to hang it on me. I'll deny it. All you'll get is a nice story that will get your old man fired out of the university. I can't understand myself. How I could... How I can be in love with anyone as rotten as you. Oh, knock it off, Fran. If you... Look, if, if, if I did do something about the baby, would you still... All right, hey, hey. Now, that's, uh, that's more like my old woman talking. Sure, if you do. I mean, you and me are a thing again. I... I don't know if Dad would... I mean, I... I don't have any money. Yeah, well, don't look at me. I ain't got the bread. But I got something better. What? Got a buddy. Mid-student. Senior. And he owes me plenty. I mean, we'll do a little collecting from him. But, but he's not a doctor. He's the next thing to it. Well, don't get the whammies. He's done it before. It's a breeze. Leave it to me. I'll set the whole thing up. <laughs> What is Daddy. it? Oh, the baby, Daddy. It's gone, but I'm... Oh, oh I'm bleeding. Oh, good oh. Lord. Doc, Doc, anything I can do? Yes, thank you. Call Dr. Montrose and get him here fast. The number's in my address book by the phone on my study desk. I'm on my way. Help me. Oh, who did this to you, friend? Friend of... The man who made you pregnant. Oh. What's his name? Oh, I can't. I, I won't... Well, no, this isn't the time. But one way or another, I'll get it, friend. And when I do, I'll find a way to make him suffer for what he's done to you. There isn't much excuse for the man whose name Dr. Felix Brandt still doesn't know, Hugh Prentice. The sad thing about life is they usually get away with things. Being without a conscience makes life a lot easier... But is anyone really without a conscience? That's something Hugh Prentice is about to have to start exploring as a strange and eerie punishment creeps over him. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Of 
course, in the Gilbert and Sullivan tradition, the Mikado's object of making the punishment fit the crime was comic and light-hearted. Here, it is deathly serious. In point of fact, unearthly so. Dr. Montrose was able to bring the hemorrhage under control after he arrived, and once it had stopped and Fran was under sedation, he met with his old friend Felix in the study. Well, she's all right now, Felix. Nothing to worry about. You don't think we should get her to the hospital? Yeah, under ordinary circumstances, perhaps, but uh, I'd say she's out of danger. She'll have to be watched closely, but I can handle that. Uh, if I put her in a hospital, it's all out in the open. Uh, you, you don't want that, do you? What do you mean, Jim? This is a pretty hidebound community, Felix. You're a good friend, Jim. Well, of yours... And little Fran. I don't want to see her hurt any... Why did she do it? I don't know. I mean, she and Hank are going to get married anyway, so It why... wasn't Hank's baby. Oh. What would you do about the man who started all this, Jim? If it were my daughter? Yes. I don't know. We're, uh... <laughs> we're a little elderly for physical retribution, aren't we? Hmm. And any other course... And problematical, probably hurt Fran more than the man. It, do you know who he is? No. Fran won't tell me. Uh, I suppose the best thing to do is let it go. Come in. How are you feeling today, Fran? I'm all right, Daddy. I know. I mean, Dr. Monroe has given you a clean bill of health. Has he? Well, he says you can get up and go back to college or whatever you want. Whatever I want. There's one thing I want I may never have any more. Didn't Dr. Jim tell you? Yes. We can talk about it later. Friend... I was just wondering... What? Would you like to... Well, I mean, Hank is still here, and he would like to see you. No. I don't want to see Hank. I'm going back where I belong, if he'll have me. Are you ready to tell me his name yet? No. Not till I find out where I stand. How can you make yourself so cheap... This man, whoever he is, has taken all the love and the joy and, and laughter out of you. How, how can you go crawling back to him? Because he's the only one who can give it back to me. And if he doesn't? Then I... I just don't want to live. I was helpless to aid her. To ease anything for her, all that burned in me was a rage for the man who had turned my happy child into a hurt and battered shell. A beggar dependent on a man who was not worthy of her. And at this moment, even though I still didn't know his name, I could curse him and wish him disaster. I could do better than that if I turned my back on a God that I felt had forsaken me and mine. And as an extension of all my psychic research, turned to black magic and called down a curse on the man who had ruined my child. But first I had to talk to Hank. I love Fran and, and I want her. I, I always will, but... Just for her sake, I wish I could break it up somehow. Get her away from this... This slimy crud that's... It's as though he has her under some kind of spell. We both know he'll hurt her again, desert her, humble her. I think Fran herself knows it. But somehow, she can't help herself. What are you going to do, Doctor? Just let her go back to him? Leave it alone? I can't stop Fran any more than you can, Hank. She's not a child. She's of age. Her life is in her own hands. I have no legal control. If we only knew who he was. Well, that won't be too hard to find out. I've thought of all kinds of things. Even though I'm not very rich, I could perhaps buy him off. I'm sure he has a price. But that wouldn't solve anything for Fran. She loves him. He's what she wants. 
He has only the crookest finger, and she'll crawl to him. That's obvious enough after all she's gone through for him. So what can we do? You? Nothing. Go back and live your life. Uh, not quite. Without Fran. Well, maybe it won't have to be without Fran. First, we have to clean this man out of her mind and her blood. But you just said we couldn't. One way. If he doesn't exist anymore, if he's dead. Wait a minute. You you can't seriously mean... Oh, don't that. worry, son. Even if I had the means, a gun, a knife, a blunt weapon, I would have neither the strength nor the courage to use them to say nothing of my lack of know-how. No. But I can wish him dead. Or worse. I might just have the power for that. Doctor, are, are you... Are you all right? <laughs> I, I don't understand you. Of course you don't understand. And I am quite all right. This is something you will have to leave to me. To anyone who reads this, it might seem fantastic. But the rites I prepared are solemn and real to more people around you than you might believe. The ceremonies of dark magic are very real to those who perform them. In the attic... I had found among friends' childhood dolls, one in the image of a man. I turned my study into a chapel of the damned, burning sulfur and asafetida. Then I recited from my book of ceremonial magic. Oh, all ye ministers and companions, I direct, conjure, constrain, and command you to fulfill my bequest willingly and straight away to accomplish the destruction of this man, unnamed, who has beset my daughter and most grievously harmed her by whatever means best suited. Great to be swinging with you again, baby. Oh, I wasn't sure you'd want me back. I look so... I don't know. Ah, you look great, kid. You're my old woman again. I'm sorry we got to ride the subway, but who's got bread for the hacks these days? Oh, I don't mind where I am. Just so long as it's with you. Yeah, stick with me, baby. You'll ride first class all the way. Unlike these types. Look at them. Long gone. You and me are special, just waiting for the right break, the chosen, huh? If you choose me. I'll buy you all the way down the line, Ken. Take a look. I mean, who is there who could walk into... What is it, you? Yeah, half, half, halfway down the car there, look. You see that guy? No, which one? Are you nuts? What do you mean, which one? How could you miss him? He's a carbon copy of me. He's even wearing the same jeans, the embroidered jacket. I... No, I don't see anyone who... Come on, come on, come on. Let's let, 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 go. i got to catch up with him. Shoot, take it easy. I don't see anyone like you said. He disappeared. He's gone, but he, uh... He's like... He's like my double. Come on, let's go upstairs. No, I, I've got to get home, Hugh. This won't take a moment. Yeah, yeah, that... There he is, there he is. He's right at the top of the stairs, next to that fat dame. No, there's no one there. She's all alone. Are you, are you? He's gone. He's gone again. But he was looking right at me. Who the devil do you suppose he was? What did he want? Hello? I was reaching for the light to douse it when all of a sudden he was sitting right there in the chair facing me. Who? Him, the double, the guy we saw on the subway. I said, How the hell did you get in here? Who are you? I am your double ganger. My what? Your double. Or if you want, your inheritor. What does that mean? It's time for you to wander like me. It's time for me to return and die as I should have. I, I don't know what you're talking about. 
A long time ago, so long you can't even begin to imagine, I sinned. And because of my sin, I was not allowed to die in peace, but condemned to wander in infinity until I found a body I could be laid to rest in. My time is almost here, and in you, I will find a home again. I don't know what kind of a nut you are, Jack, but I'm going to kick your tail out of here so I can get some sleep. That won't be necessary. Sleep for you is all I'm waiting for. Huh? When you are safely asleep, you are at my mercy. The moment your eyes close, your body will be mine, and your soul will be left to wander through the ages alone, waiting endlessly for peace and the blessing of eternal sleep. Get out! Get away from me! You're nothing but a... Nothing but a what, Hugh? Uh, he's a ghost. I mean... Uh, I, I could see him, plain as I see you, but I could see through him, too, like a lamp in back of him, shining through his head. The pattern of a chair he was sitting in, as clear as a, a bell through him. I mean, he wasn't real. So, so I, I threw on some clothes, I ran out of the house, I spent the night walking, I was afraid to go to sleep, to bed. Friend, but nothing like this ever happened. Even on the wildest trip, I, I never blew so wild as this. What am I going to do? Hugh, I think you should see my father. Yeah, oh, sure, that, that'd be great after everything. I'd be lucky if he didn't try to have me arrested. He doesn't know who you are. He doesn't know you were the one. Yeah, but what could he do? He's a psychologist. He could help you. Look, you were in one of his lecture courses. All you have to do is go up to him and say you have a problem. He'd help you. Now, now, the whole thing is crazy. I see some character on a subway in threads like me. I have a crazy dream. Right away, I blow my cool. There's nothing the matter with me. Now, come on, let's let's cut out. I, I ain't even going to see you home. I, I'm going back to bed and, and, and catch some shut Oh, you listen to me. Don't look at me that way. Don't you turn against me. Do you think I could after all that's happened? Yeah. Right, you. You I could count on. Yeah. You're my woman no matter what I do to you, right? I love you, Hugh. And don't ever forget it, baby. Now, come on, blow. I gotta... I gotta hit the sack. Ah! All right, back, back up, man. I got a knife. Get lost. No. You are the lost one. What are you talking? Who is it? Your double canker just waiting for you to get tired enough till your sleep is deep enough. For what? To take over your body so that with it I may bring myself to the peace of the grave. What is this wraith that dogs Hughes path? A figment of a diseased imagination? A figure of retribution created by a conscience weighted with guilt? Or is it some ghastly nemesis conjured from the supernatural, the world outside our comprehension, summoned up by Dr. Felix Brandt through the agency of the devil? I'll be back shortly with Act Three. night, Hugh Prentice fled to his apartment as though the hounds of hell were at his heels. Locked in securely, with every light blazing, riding high on Benzedrine to keep awake, he paced the two small rooms like a caged tiger. And everywhere he turned, he faced the doppelganger, watching him silently, waiting patiently, a twisted smile of anticipated triumph on his face. At last, he could stand it no longer and fled the apartment with the first light of morning, roaming the streets, afraid to turn his head, knowing his double still followed on his heels. At last, exhausted, he found a small restaurant open and sat there drinking coffee after coffee and watching the clock till nine o'clock came. Then he crossed to the public phone to make a call. Dr. 
Dr. Brant speaking. Dr. Brant, uh, this is, uh, this is Hugh Prentice. Uh, I'm a student of yours in the lecture series. It's a large class. I don't place you for the moment. Well, that doesn't matter. What does matter is, uh, look, uh, Doc, I'm, I'm in trouble. Can you help me? Help you? How? I can't. Not over the phone. It's, uh, it's like a, it's like a matter of life and death. Help me. Well, if you put it that way, of course. I'll try, Mr. Prentice, was it? Yeah. Prentice. Hugh Prentice. Very well. How soon can you be here? We're within ten minutes. Very well. I'll be waiting. I hung up with the strangest feeling. My comprehensive basic psychology course has a large attendance. Some 100. The name meant nothing to me. No, that isn't right. I, I didn't recognize it. But what I did recognize was a... A stifling feeling rising in my gorge of implacable hatred for this Hugh Prentice. Why? The name filled me with revulsion. What connection could... And then suddenly... Oh, the pain struck again, sharper than ever. Oh, now, where... where did... Come. Morning, Felix. Uh, I just dropped by the... Uh, uh, what is it? The, the, the pain? Yes. Uh, where are your morphine tablets? Drawer. Forgot this morning. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, oh. I'll do better than that. Why must you be uh, so pig-headed? Don't warn to establish the habit. Uh, the habit will hurt you less than the pain uh, right now. To, uh, here, let, let get, one, get one arm out of the coat there. Uh, 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 that's better. Uh, uh, can you roll back your sleeve while, while I prepare the syringe? Yes, hurry. Just let me, let me swab first. Uh, oh. uh, hold steady, hold oh. steady. Ah. Uh, so this will take hold in a minute. Oh, they're, they're getting worse, Jim. And more frequent. Well, I'm sorry, I can't help any more than I can. The only treatment medicine has to offer you, Felix, is palliative. I know. I also know I haven't got much longer. That's what worries me so about Fran and that guy, whoever he is. I don't want him to wreck the rest of her life. Oh, that'll be one of my students. Wants to see me about something. I have to run anyway. I, I just wanted to tell you some good news. I got the tests back on Fran, and I was maybe a little hasty on my first diagnosis. With care, there's no reason she can't have a child again. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad, as long as that skunk is still alive, whoever he is. I'll let your visitor in. Oh, I, I was looking yeah, for... Yeah, Dr. Branty, you, you have the right office. I was only visiting. Shut the door and come in. You're Mr. Prentice? Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. That's right. Hugh Prentice. Sit down. Oh. Suppose you tell me what's troubling you. Have you ever had any delusions like this before? <laughs> Not on your life. Have you done anything recently that you're... that you're sorry for, ashamed of? No. Like what? I don't know. That's why I asked. No. Why should I be ashamed of anything I do? I'm, I mean, like I free wheeled, you know? I give what I get. That's... That's all evens with me. What does that mean? Like it's a tough world, Doc. I mean, uh, they're all against me, like most of them. They? Who are they? You know, people. Are your mother and father still alive? No. My old man took off before I was five. And my ma, well, she horsed around like, uh... Well, like she had to live, make the bread for me, like anyone, I guess, uh... She liked a good time. What kind of a job did she have? <sighs> Are you kidding? Bringing home uncles for me. Huh. I must have had a hundred or so uncles by the time I was 14. And then... Then what? Ah, then she left me with an aunt. Some old dried-up stick. Ah, I shouldn't kick about her at that. When she died, she left me enough dough to go to college like now, and, uh... Hey, hey, look, what has this got to do with that, uh... That, that goon who's tracking me? 
I'm trying to get around to that. You don't like women very much, do you, Hugh? I don't know what you're getting at. You like to punish them because of what your mother did to you. Isn't that it? Look, I don't have to have you push me around like them. I mean, all I came here for was to ask for help. And I'm trying to give it to you. Well, can you just get this haunt, whatever the hell it is, off my back? I want to try, if you'll just help me. Anything, Doc, anything. I, 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 I got to get some sleep, and uh, I'm, af I'm afraid to. You're quite safe here. What's that thing? It's a metronome. Some people use it to learn to keep time to music. I use it to calm people down. Now, just keep your eye on the needle as it swings back and forth. And try to relax. And answer my questions as honestly as you can. And maybe, together, we can get to the root of what's wrong with you. Tell me your name again. Hugh. Hugh what? Hugh Prentice. Where were you born? Allentown, Pennsylvania. What was your father's name? Frank. And your mother's? Mary. I use hypnosis a lot in my work, but never more deliberately, and I'm ashamed to say, callously than today. Because suddenly, from some deep recess of my being, an electric wave was sending its knowledge to my brain. A second sight was born, and I was suddenly sure who Hugh Prentice really was. Can you hear me, Hugh? Yes. You know a girl named Fran Brandt, don't you? Sure. She's my chick. You know she's my daughter? Yeah. And you made her pregnant? She was careless. You took her to someone to get rid of the child? Sure. It's the way it is. No sweat. Don't you know she loves you? Man, like their buses. Another one any minute. Yeah, sure. That's how chicks are. Do you love her? What's with all this love jive? I ain't tying myself down no way. Just like I told you, I free wheel. Nobody gonna cut down my style. Keep trying. All the squares, all of them, but I'll show them. Anyone ties me down, I stomp on them good. Especially chicks like my mother. All sweet words and cut your throat the first chance they get. Only me, I'm too smart. I cut them down to size first. Don't you worry about old Hugh. The morphine was wearing off already. I sat back in my chair watching the boy whose secrets I had bared. A schizophrenic, classic, already paranoid. Possibly he could be saved through analysis, chemotherapy, new treatments which are being reached every day. Treatments I would never live to see. Treatments he would never willingly seek as he had sought me. Because out of the dark side of my studies and my learning, I had raised a doppelganger. Then for a moment... The pain hit me so wildly, so acutely, agonizingly, that I must have blacked out a moment because... Don't bring him out of his hypnosis. He doesn't deserve to live. I cannot condemn him to the death in limbo like you live. Let me tell you something, old man. You are about to die. Two doors face you. Open one... And you let this scourge out to destroy your daughter as well as himself. Open the other. And I take his body and your daughter has her chance to live her life. Her chance to find happiness instead of despair and degradation. Which will it be? 
Which will you choose? Choose. 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 Only in sleep can a doppelganger take possession of another body. Looking at the boy frozen in deep hypnosis across my desk, around him, was it my own pain? A shadowy figure hovered. I knew I could banish the shadow if I willed. But I had chosen my door. I rose and left the office to go home to my study. or his body two days after he smashed into the rock wall at Highgate Turn popularly known as Satan's Trap in our neighborhood what soul possessed it I will know very soon I am about to die and leave this manuscript transcribed through those two days in exquisite paint for my daughter and Hank to read I know it will bring them their own pain, but I hope it will bring them peace. And if I am condemned, too, for my sins, to wander as a doppelganger, I can only pray that what I have done may be worth it and will have brought my daughter happiness. This manuscript was read by Hank as executor of the estate. And in that position, he exercised a humane decision, perhaps beyond his powers. He did not let Fran read her father's letter. He buried it in a safe deposit vault until the time was ripe, long after they were married and had children of their own. I'll be back shortly. This story came to me through accidental channels, long after the principles were gone. I cannot vouch for the truth of it any more than I suppose any of the principles involved could. It's a story, I suppose, of retribution, and at the same time, a frightening lesson to all of us who stretch the human relationship beyond normal demands. If we sin deep enough, in some form, in some way, I suppose there is a doppelganger who will vie with us for retribution. The only way to avoid that is to deny him the chance. Our cast included Howard Da Silva, Rosemary Rice, Tony Roberts, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. How do you render justice in your country? We have courts, when we have judges, juries, lawyers. Is it wise to allow people to judge people? It is the best way, the most democratic. Only the immortal gods may decide. But how do you know to get them to make a decision? The gods have sent my people a spring of sparkling water. The accused must drink at the spring. And what does that prove? The innocent walk away vindicated. And the guilty? The guilty fall down dead. Well, it is hardly the way. You will see it with your own eyes. We shall have a trial tonight. Oh? Who is accused? You are. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>